Hooray! Hi everyone, this is Lillian Matambo. Thank you so much for joining us on this live stream. We have a topic and um, this topic is uh, quite um, uh, unique. Uh, there's a lot that needs to be talked about. Um, just as you are entering this stream, please share. I know it's a bit late for some of you, but I had to do it this time because I've been a busy bee. I've been so, so busy. Uh, share, 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 share. Let me send you the link to join this live stream uh, so that we can discuss this matter. Um, so I was watching a video by uh, Edith Nawaki, the president of uh, FDD, uh, the same um, party uh, that I received some people that defected from her party because she doesn't help them <clears throat> um, just about two weeks ago. And she said a lot of things about uh, the UPND president, who is our president, my president, Mr. Haga in the Hichilema. So I'm going to drop the link now on my YouTube channel. Um, on my YouTube channel. Well, okay, people are still trying to see you when I'm live. Okay. Okay, and thank you so much for 86,000 subscribers. Na tote la sana. So join us, join us as we discuss this topic. Um, I'm sending you this, the link on YouTube so you can join us as we discuss this uh, topic. Oh, thank you so much. Everybody that is watching from Chingola and other parts of the world, then I'm going to share it on my uh, community tab as a watch party. Uh, you've been waiting since 7 p.m. Really? I only just started this live stream like only just a few minutes ago. Uh, join us as we talk about Edith Nawakwe. Nawakwe. Where are you watching us from? Let me know. Join us. Uh, this story is, is going viral. I'm going to be reading a lot of comments from people. Mm. Yep. Okay. So let's start the watch party. Hi, John. How are you? Good to see you. Yes, we're going to win as UPT, UPND, no matter what. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, the numbers are going up. Numbers are going up. Kakwesi watching us from Nottingham. Thank you so much. Um, let me see if there's anything. I do a program on my YouTube channel called What's in the Papers. And I'll read something um, from Diggers. I bought this newspaper on Wednesday. And it's got something <clears throat> quite important. Um, President Haka Inde Hichilema is the richest man in Zambia. And um, he was interviewed a few days ago on Kamnet TV uh, via Zoom. And the interview was a lot of things that you know he, he did speak about. And he talked about his wealth and everybody has been talking about the wealth of the president of UPND. Um, so HH stated that I denied myself unnecessary consumption to become successful, says Hichilema. So UPND President Hakai. Sorry, when people are trying to call me, it, it uh, disturbs the signal. So successful um, man because he has denied himself unnecessary consumption, like purchasing expensive cars, which is why he can promise a better Zambia once elected as head of state. Meanwhile, Hichilema says he will have a balanced cabinet with representation from all 10 provinces. Hichilema was speaking on Kamnet TV's National Matters program, which was hosted by Pastor Moses Chiloba. Uh, I am not in Aliko Dangote's league. I have met Dangote before and we had a conversation totally. So it's important that we get to this and then we read this and then we get to the other story. So 
on page three. Okay, so it's a whole lot. Invite people. Invite people. And people are saying, uh huh, it is Nawaku is a failed politician. So for those of you who would like to join, join on this link. So this is, you know, diggers. I buy newspapers to, you know, keep me updated with what's going on. And, you know, Mr. Haka in the HLMA is very successful. Uh, he's a millionaire and everybody's eyeing his wealth. And, uh, you know, there's been lots of stories here and there. Like I've said before, we've had previous leadership, you know, that have, you know, stolen money or done whatever they can. And they are not as rich as uh, Aliko Dangote. Uh, so surely there's something special about Mr. HLMA that uh, makes him so rich regardless of what people have said, he's never dropped. Uh, like he said, he has denied himself unnecessary consumption. Let me see who's here. Okay, I can see hardly Sia Mone is here live. How are you? I'm fine and you, madam. Fine, thank you. What's your comment on Madam Edith Nawakwi over our president, Mr. Haka in the Hichilema? It's, uh, it's really surprising to hear the old woman uh, attacking the president. Actually, as youths, uh, we didn't expect her to speak in the manner the way she spoke. Mm. Because when when you look at the issue which she was she was raising with the issue which was done in the past almost twenty years ago, and uh, she forgot that she was the finance minister by that time, and uh, for yeah. those accusations which she was mentioned, she, Mr. Kandeshamo was just uh, an evaluator of those things, so I don't know why. Mm. So, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't agree. Uh, John, uh, John's cheetah says Edith Nawakwi is a surrogate and a minion who lost her popularity, hence, seeking adoption from PF. All her grounds of accusations are, you know, futile. Um, she was in the government and H wasn't in it in the government. We, the people of Zambia, have resolved to support HH and the UPND in forming government next year. That's powerful. That's powerful. Um, Sami on Facebook says, Nawakwi is a drama queen. I followed her interview. I didn't hear any credible point from her, apart from her calling our Bali ruthless. I just don't know how much she was given for her to come out like that. And this is the same person who owns Laganya sausages. Hi, Enias, how are you? I'm fine, madam. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. What would you like to say? All right, I think you're mad. It is now. I would like to say it's now actually she's the media. She's been changed in the government uh in the uh, I heard now that because she has learned out of her ideas and now she can use her and uh your net your network is not so good. We we how are you? Hi, Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Yeah, how are you? Yes, this nice is William. You. Yeah. Hello. What would you like to share on this platform? Yeah. Yes, how are you? I'm okay. How are you? Fine, thank I'm you. Okay. Yes, so um, I want to talk about this issue that has. Yes. Hello? Hello? 
Yeah, so, uh, you know, this issue, yeah. these people are just trying to, to frustrate us. And um, I think one thing that I can say is that um, we really have to work hard on the ground because uh, they are everywhere in terms uh, everyone is seeing what they are doing right now. Everyone what they are doing right now. So, what, what's going to happen is that in the end, people will start you know, bringing out fake stories, you no know, HH this, HH did that. But I trust and believe that when God's time has come, no one can, can stop it. So 2021 is just forward. We are there on the background. We are there on the ground to make sure that whatever plans they make, it doesn't go through. And um, I'm shocked that uh, an opposition can attack a fellow opposition. That's a taboo. I've never seen that. Yeah. Because oppositions work together. Hello? Yes, I'm listening. Hello? Yes. I'm so listening. It's a taboo. I've never heard it anywhere. Yeah, I've, I've never heard it anywhere that uh, an opposition can attack a fellow mm. opposition. You know, what I know from the little knowledge that I have is that um, the oppositions work together for the good of the country. So the yes. interest of the country must come first. We learn that as Zambians, I believe that it's going to be a brilliant country. But the problem is whoever, you know, feels like take off and they, they just start, you know, things without. I don't know if uh, uh, the president for um, uh, Madam Edith Nawaki, I don't know what she's thinking right now, if she reflects on what she said uh, from mm -hmm. deep down in her heart. I don't think that was that diplomatic. Uh, that was, you know, something that lacked some, some sort of, um, you know, eligibility and, and diplomacy, or to say, because everybody has seen how this country has been ruled. There's no freedom of expression. There's no freedom of speech. And how come she's yeah. been just, you know, put that to grave and decide to say she's raising up issues that happened back then, issues that happened when HH was 29 years old, and I don't know if he was 30 or 29, because of the issues which are long buried. And now the question is, how do we take Zambia to that sweet and promised motherland? That would be the question now. Those false allegations are long buried. They just show that someone has a personal grudge. Yes. So for me, Madam Lily, I see a personal grudge in that. And as UPND, let's not pay evil by evil. Let God avenge on our behalf. Ours is forward. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Hi. Oh, James. Has a... Okay. Luhan Samuel. Thank you so much, William Piri, for your contribution. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and then we have Mob Mobin Mukadam. Oh, gone. Luhan Samuel, how are you? Hello. Yeah, hi. What would you like to say about the topic, please? Oh, we can't hear you. Okay, people are losing signal. Okay, let me let, let me read this. Uh something very important. <laughs> Uh, I'm about to, I'm, I want to read something very important. Uh, let, let, there's some comments. People want to join the stream uh, on YouTube. Let me send you the link and Facebook as well so you can join the stream. Uh, let me send it on um, YouTube. There's something I just read in WhatsApp group and it says, you know, uh, Edith Nawaku's poor attempt to shift the blame for the IMF and World Bank when asked why she signed such poor many agreements on behalf of Zambian people. The IMF World Bank can be blamed for many things, but not forcing you to be incompetent. Um, obviously, she was the finance minister then, and we know that uh, she was the finance minister, and she made decisions then. Let me just read something that I received as well uh, regarding that. Well, let me see. Um, okay. Sorry, yeah, sorry. 
I want to play something for you quickly because people are asking. Some of them haven't seen the interview. So I'll just play just very briefly what was said and then uh, you will get the whole uh, gist of it. Okay. All right. Okay. Just listen to these few minutes. Those are issues. So when you say he wasn't visited, because in this country, the only corrupt people are those in government. Those who are outside the routine using government means, I never followed. I think you saw that when we left at MMT, a lot of my colleagues were in jail, were sent where, even now the people who are being followed are those in government. Those who were advising government have never been questioned, have never been followed. And it's a very unfair situation. For example, do you think the 10 million given to, to, to Grand Toronto, 10 million US dollars, as you receive us for, for Rampos, if that was given to the secretary, to the treasurer, or to the minister of finance, you think they would have survived? And go two years later and say, no, they have money in offshore accounts, which they can't explain. What type of business does Mr. Hagain they had to be able to have millions of dollars in offshore accounts which he declares? Now, so if someone has been radical and have, the law has not visited him, one day the law will visit them because people will go to him and say, tell us how you acquired this house, this asset, that. 27, he says he was 29. He was 29, he had no power at the time. How then did he end up after privatization being such a rich man? That's the only question that people want to know. That's all. I mean, he needs to be firm enough to come to the, to the public and say, this is my history of my wealth. I put one animal, I got this farm, multiplied and this is how I've been. I was living in this house before I moved to Savo Road and how did I get this house? Explain. And you understand Zambians are very forgiving. But please, this issue is like a boil. It continues to fest until we can squeeze it. And the only way is not to behave like the Donald Trump and hide your records. The best way is to be open and tell the public, educate them. Look, we were okay, so that's um, um, it is now trying to blame uh, our president, Mr. Haka, in the history of Lemako, being rich. I mean, she was the finance minister then, and she was signing the signatures. Um, in as much as you know, he was there when they were selling, but the final say came from her, and he was not part of government then. James Malambo, what would you like to say about Edith Nawakwe, please? Uh, thank you, thank you, Ma. Thank you. Um, no, I, I, I just don't understand Madam Edith Nawakwe. She was a finance minister by the she, she doesn't. Actually, someone can tell you that she was a finance minister. She, how can she accuse someone? Let's say, oh, actually, she doesn't understand accounting or economics, economics to say. She's rapping our president that no is so this, and she was in this hotel, which is in Livingston. Some of that hotel, sorry, Mama. Hmm. Yeah, I, see, I think your signal is not so good. Is it like, uh, you know? James, your signal is not so good. Because uh, you're breaking. You're breaking. Okay, let's have. Um, let's, let's have. Um, you're breaking. Let's have wise man speak. Let's have. Help. Yeah, you need to come back, James. Hi, wise man, how are you? How are you, wise man? I think wise man is frozen. Hi, Ebo, how are you? Hi, Ebo. Wow, people are losing their signal. 
Okay, um, Alice Banda says, Madam Edith Nawakwi clearly said that HH made the deal for the Intercontinental Hotel deal uh, was made by him. And he later joined the company that bought the hotel in Livingston. Now, Madam Nawakwi should explain to the public how HH got to the house at the riverside. Yeah. And before anybody goes in office, they need to declare their assets. And I think Mr. Haka in the HLM has been a, a millionaire for a long time. Uh, I don't even know why people would even be doubting his work. <coughs> Wise man, how are you? Hello? Are you able to get me? Yeah, how are you? Can you say, speak up, please? Yes. Uh, I think the network is not that good today. But I can hear you. You can hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, good evening to everyone. Yeah, speak up, please. Good evening. Okay, let me just uh, let me just get the headset, then I'll come back later. Okay. Uh, can we have Ebo Kakolwa to speak, please? Hi, Ebo Kakolwa. Speak, please. We've lost him. Okay, so let me just read something. What? Oh, wow. Someone is saying it is now because a Finnish politician. Okay, let me read this. As Minister Nawapi uh, presided over the transfer of millions of dollars from her ministry to the Zamtra account at the Sweden National Commercial Bank in London, according to the FDTJ London trial documents, $52 million was raised from the FTJ auction and was banked between 1995 to 2001. The money has not been recovered till date. So this is what happens when you, when you thought you were sharp and you didn't manage <laughs> to succeed. Let's have Lee uh, Shanik Wiseman say something, please. Can we please have Lee say something, please? Hi, Lily. How are Hello. you? Hello. I'm good on the book. Can you hear How me? How are you? I'm okay. It's yes, been I long. can. It's been a long yes, time. Yes, it has. Yeah, I've been. Busy. I've been so busy, but I'm 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 here here and there here and there. I'm always here at least. <laughs> yeah. We are, all, we, are, we are always busy uh, mobilizing and making sure that uh, things yes. move in the correct way. Exactly. Actually, uh, exactly. What mm -hmm. I want to say uh, on this issue uh, is that uh, I think Madam Edith Nawaku, uh, she, she don't know what, what she's doing. Uh, to my to my to my own understanding, what I've uh, come to realize, she's helping uh, to justify our president to say our president mm -hmm. is innocent regarding of this issue of, of the mines. And uh, the the second thing uh, is that uh, when a person <coughs> come out uh, like that, which means good night. To, to make things right, to, to put up something of which the nation now they have come to get, to understand that our president has got nothing to do with the, with uh, with privatize of the mines uh, for the sale of the mines blah 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 because a lot of issues have been raised uh, concerning uh, that, that issue. But mm. I'm, I'm I'm very happy and I'm glad that uh, to see to it that the truth I've known, the nation have known the truth. 
truth have come out. So uh, my my surprise, I was very shocked because a lot of mm. people uh, from what they know that our president have got uh, something to do with mines. A lot of people have blamed him of the long of, of which he didn't do. So I'm very, I'm very happy. That's my, my take on, on this issue. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much for your contribution. Um, you know, like I'm reading from Newton Banji. Banji says, I think this story has become boring. Every election at HH and Agudis are this and that. We are interested in how <laughs> Kwacha will uh, be normalized from this mess and move forward with HH. Mm -hmm. uh, Gangote Bigijo says HH will win next year, even if you rise against him, HH Zambia forward. Uh, Jabulani on Facebook says everything in this country is a mess. Um, you can't even connect properly. <laughs> <laughs> Enoch Andres, Andres says, to me, nothing will change, no matter what, ni Bali Chabe this time around, ni change, that's all. I think, um, I've, I've never heard anybody in the opposition that attacks another person in the opposition. I thought people in the opposition are supposed to work together. And the common goal for you being part of the opposition is that you want to see change in our country. But then when you see Edith Nawaki attacking HH, it becomes more personal and deep because, I mean, for how long are you going to be talking about his wealth? And she stated that he needs to declare his assets. Look, agribusiness is a lot of money and people make a lot of money, millions, and it's how you manage yourself and it's all about lifestyle. He has clearly stated in the paper that I was reading that he has denied himself unnecessary <laughs> consumption of things for him to be successful, you know. And uh, Mr. Hichilema was speaking on some television on you know national matters program yeah. where he yeah. talked about how he became wealthy, recalling that when the UPND leader was asked a similar question during an SABC interview, he failed to explain clearly while Aliko Dangote, Africa's richest, clearly explains. So in response, Hichi Lema attributed his wealth to the opportunities which he utilized and the education he received, saying it enabled him to start a business uh, in uh, corporate investments. I mean, when you invest in so many businesses, you make money. Um, Nathan says, Lillian, Hichi Shatak Nawakwi, saying she was the finance minister when privatization took place. I mean, if she's a finance minister, how would this young 29-year-old, I mean, you've seen how our um, selfish ministers that we have now, do you think they can allow you to even get a hold of a penny? Uh, you know, only she knows why she's bitter about the whole thing. Leonard Chuzu says, I know Jagabani is also preparing something about Nawakwe. Chichi says, these people are just scared of HH next year is forward watching you from Mansa. Uh, Daniel says, but the truth is HH got a lot from the deals. That's what I'm saying. Even if somebody got a million dollars and they managed that million dollars to expand to five million dollars, it's better than somebody who got five, one million dollars and they are still complaining because they are poor. You understand? Um, so like Catherine is saying, we are all tired of PF. If HH actually did that, PF would not spare him. He, he would have been arrested long ago. They are pure lies. I agree. Okay, thank you so much. Let's have Tengani speaking, please. How are you? Good, and how are you? I'm fine, thank you, sir. Uh, basically, I actually, for you, I'm from Malawi. Um, we just had a Oh, good. Yeah, I'm following yeah, the issue. Yeah. I'm based in the United States. But... Um, I have yeah. seen a uh, few uh, like young people who are taking part in politics in Africa. It's shame that uh, up to now we are still uh, looking as a uh, laughing dog in the world. Uh, when you're talking about Zambia, it's all the same as Malawi too, because it's just neighboring countries. It's very unfortunate that uh, um, we don't have like we are still lacking medicines. Our people they don't have. Uh, good accommodation they don't have good jobs you see most of the young population going to another country so much so, have yeah. yeah because they are looking for uh jobs and 
It's a uh, very important. Fine, that we, we, mm. It's very important we the young oh, generation yeah. that we, we have to lead. And actually, I'm recommending you the good but, job uh, that you're doing. I that we need to educate. We need to inform the people of Zambia that this time when they're coming to vote, they mm. need and whom they're putting into positions and we need the people that they can take Africa to another level. We need to unite as Africa so yeah. that we can take our continent to another level. If we're not going to stand, mm -hmm. if you're not going to kick out the people that they're doing corruption, I mean, Africa will keep going down. So what I can say is the youth, we, need, we can talk and talk and talk, but the youth have to take part. Mm -hmm. We have to register, we have to go yes. and vote. It's high time exactly. that we, we, we have been discussing about this, the problems that we have as Africa. Uh, it's high time that we have uh, collapsed leaders in the positions for a long time. It's high time that mm. we've been looking at these things to take, I mean, to, to get loose into Africa. And I, I actually for you, whatever you're doing, the good job that you're doing, I don't want, I cannot comment much about uh, party politics in Zambia. But as a fact, Zambia is not the way it was. Uh, Malawi, it mm. was the way it, it's not the way it was. By now, we could have been, to, I mean, those times, some time back, we used to export, we used to have, we have a lot of resources, but you know, the country is too poor. So we have to join hands. We need to work, risk be young, principled politicians. Politicians, we have joined mm. with a purpose. Politicians that we want to bring change, not just change, but the little, little, uh, mm. little his life should change. It's true. Mm. When you're walking here in the United States and then they say, oh, Africa is poor. They see us, the little malnutrition people. They see the houses. We feel bad because we know where we're coming mm. from. We have good resources. We are rich, but it's just that we don't have readership. So mm. as Zambia is expecting elections is coming, uh, maybe a couple months or a couple time. like, I wish you good guys. And, uh, Zambians, you have to go and vote and try as much as you can to, to work towards change. It's my prayer that one day Africa will stand as one. One day we are going to make United States of Africa. That's my prayer. And we, um, so when I come back home in Malawi, we're going to come in Zambia and see how you guys are doing in Zambia and go to South Africa, go to Tanzania, yes. see how we can work together. And put our can put our continent on the map. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for your contribution. Uh, we are blessed to have you know people from other parts of Africa contributing to Zambian matters. It just shows that people are following our stories on our on my YouTube platform, and it's very very important. I'd like to read something uh, by some Saboy Moela where she says, um, if HH and the UPND had been dealing with the privatization issue the way he's currently dealing with it, uh, the propaganda around it would have destroyed his political fortunes for years. But better late than never in politics, silence is not always golden because your opponents will go to town with their own accusations. So this current strategy is the best. Deal with it head on and let those accusing you prove their accusations. It was very good listening to HH on radio today, responding to that old boring, boring uh, record uh, of privatization. And I'm sure Nawaku didn't even expect it. Her interview, as usual, was so disappointing. And just when I was about to totally give up because I was badly irritated, the unexpected happened. Nawaku is always a letdown with her kind of politics, ever attacking her fellow opposition parties even women NGOs that we all respect, value, and depend on as women. So how does she expect people to support her if even organizations like the NO, NGOCC are heavily attacked by her? As women, it's not just about supporting fellow women, but supporting someone with, clear, with a clear political, developmental, and, agen and gender you know, agenda that will help uplift lives of other women and the country at large. But sadly, Nawakwe uh, lamentably fell, falls short of both. So Nawakwe is a total disgrace from what, you know, people are saying, uh, like Vincent is saying, Vincent Chola is saying on YouTube, the Chilua government sold the mines. So who was HH to stop them? They asked him to evaluate 
and he did just that. Uh, so it seems they've been caught unaware. They weren't expecting that. Okay, so let's have Ju no Shenik. Hi, Shenik. Let's have Shenik. Hi, Shenik. Hi, Shenik. Hi, Shanik. Hi, can someone else just can someone else just make their point? I just I just wanna do something quickly. Okay, all right, okay. Let's have Joanne make a point. Yeah, hi Joanne, how are you? I'm all right, thank you, Lily. How are you? Tired. Are you able to get yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's it's understood with you looking at what you are doing on the ground. Um, yeah, it's quite an interesting uh, uh, discussion. At the same yes. time, quite painful looking at what has been going on for quite a long period of time. I've had questions that I've been asking myself. Yeah. Um, twenty sixteen. Mm. Twenty sixteen. Uh, after the elections, one of our leaders was qualified to be um, one of the richest Zambians after having been in leadership for less than two years. And we've sat on that mm. issue as Zambians. We've never asked about it. The other time mm. I was going through online, checking the top richest Zambians that we have, we've got... Um, yeah. Uh, Kaiser Zulu listed Kaiser. as the yes yeah. as one of second. the second yeah it could be the second richest Zambia. Mm. The question that comes in is where have they attained their their wealthy? They've amassed a lot of wealthy. Where has the money come from? We are seated as Zambians, not asking where these people have acquired their wealth, including our leader. Mm. We have seen the, 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 the member of parliament in dollar dishing out money, yeah. bragging about the wealth that is acquired. We can't ask about yeah. that. Now, yeah. we keep following a person who we have seen his wealth grow. And we, we, we're failing to, we, we, we keep asking where has he attained his wealthy instead mm -hmm. of asking the real culprits where they've acquired their wealth within the shortest period of time, less than four years. Mm -hmm. The other time I was listening to, 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 to HH, I was so amazed with the answer that he gave. It was a brief answer, mm -hmm. but with substance in it. An evaluator yeah. evaluates the worthness of a property. If I'm hired as a consultant to evaluate, I will give mm -hmm. the value of an item based on the current value. I've got mm -hmm. no right to question as to what you are going to do with that item, whether you sell it or not. My, my duty is to evaluate as a consultant and I'm paid based on the consultancy or the services that I'm offering to an institution. The, the, mm. the, 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 the time that he, he was, his, his services was requested, it was at a time when that, you know, HH was between um, less than 30 years old. Who yes. in Zambia can have the ability at that age to overrule the decision of the government, you go and sell the mines. It doesn't make sense. Even a child understands. Then somebody yeah. comes up and says, you sold the mines. Where was the president, pre President Chiruba then? Where were the ministers then? Our current president was one of the lawyers then advising the mm. government of what to do and what not to do. Where was he? The, the, the speaker that we had, Nawaki, Nawaki was one of the, the members, the group that was formed mm. to do the privatization. She was part of the team. Where was she? 
for a young person to come up and tell them to say, I'm going to sell the mines. If he sold the mines, where did he take the money? Where was the government? Yes. All these are questions that we need to, uh, to, 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 ask, be, to ask. They are taking us for a ride thinking we are that dull and dumb as Zambians such that we cannot see the reality and think beyond their level of mm -hmm. thinking. It doesn't make sense. Why are they drifting our attention, the Zambians' attention, away from the reality? There is too much corruption mm. in Zambia, which we are all, we've all cried foul. And they've seen, mm. they've confirmed by themselves that the corruption levels in government are high, and they've kept quiet. They are busy attacking a person for no apparent reason, even if it's desperation. Desperation should go for good conduct, good um, mm -hmm. action. You see that? Why can't they put yes. across things that make sense so that we all see to say this is what is on the ground? If, you know, yes. um, now, 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 during the interviews, mentioned to say he was a child. That is why he was probed. He wasn't followed by the police. The question is, does law favor age of a person? It doesn't favor. If, if he had criminal activities at a time he was young, why didn't the government then take up the responsibility to, to, to take him to court and answer for yes. his crimes? They were quiet. Now, today she wants to say because he was, he was young. Who? The, from the, I, for the period I've been here in, you know, you know uh, for the period I've been in, in Zambia, I would honestly tell you to say law in Zambia only favors People in the government, not a mayor Zambian. That person was just a mayor Zambian, employed by some company where he was offering his service. Hence, the government requested for his service. So what prevented them from not taking legal actions? It doesn't make sense even herself what she's saying. Moreover, she was part of the, she, she, she was, she was part of the, 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 the team that was under privatization. My question is, her herself, where has she gotten the, the wealth that she, she's acquired? She's a rich person. Yes. Rich. Yeah. You say that. And yeah. no one questions her wealthy. Eh? Mm -hmm. No one questions her wealth. We are all complaining. We expected this opposition. She's in opposition. She's supposed to be the person who should be standing and voice, yeah. you know, voice on behalf of the voiceless Zambians. Mm -hmm. She's supposed to be the one standing up and cautioning, you know, ministers who've amassed wealthy. Where have you gotten the wealthy? But she's the person who's attacking her fellow opposition mm -hmm. who she's supposed to stand beside and fight the oppressors mm -hmm. that we have at the moment. Is she happy yeah. herself watching this live stream? Is she happy with the poverty levels that the Zambian people are going through? We've got it. when you when you walk down the you know the streets of Rusaka, you are going to see a lot of um, 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 uh, um, street kids with barely yes. nothing, no food to eat, no clothes to wear, no blankets to cover themselves in the cold. We are seeing old parents lining up the streets begging for a fifteen way. Now we've got ministers who've amassed wealthy and able to walk and blag about the wealth they've acquired and call us fools Imagine. because us who are fools, we have been taken advantage of the wealth that Zambian, Zambia has. Is that, are we happy with that? No. It is so painful. It is so painful because we expect to have credible leaders, leaders with integrity, leaders who feel for the Zambian people, not leaders who mm. only look at the, their own interest, like Nawakwe. For how long has she been in, in, in opposition? How, when has she stood up mm. to voice, to speak on behalf of the Zambians? Nawakwe only comes into the media during elections because she wants some favors from the, from, <laughs> from, 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 from the current government. We've seen this many times. Mm -hmm. She's now come back into the media, mm -hmm. start voicing out why she's attacking the opposition like she did the last time to attend my regime so mm -hmm. that she's got support probably from the government instead of voicing out mm -hmm. on, you know, on behalf of the poor Zambian, on behalf of the women of Zambia because she's a woman who's supposed to stand mm -hmm. in 
women in, ma in markets who literally have got nothing, who can barely survive, who can barely have a meal, like what you are doing and other, uh, other credible uh, women are doing, it doesn't make sense. That's why we are saying we are tired. We are all complaining. We don't have opportunity to, to, to you know, to, to, to the food basket that the, the, the government, the, the ministers have yes. and ourselves have. So because us, we don't have. What we are saying is we want change. Secondly, I'll make sure okay, you thank mention. You. Thank you so much. One minute, one minute. Thank you so much. I think we have African Pride who wants to comment. He's driving and his signal keeps dropping, dropping. And then we need to have our young lady get seated, young gentleman. Hi, Africa, my pride, how are you? Fine, and you, madam, good evening. Good evening, how are you? I'm okay. Yeah, I'm following the conversation over this issue. And I understand yes. to say it's uh, not fair for this accusation uh, which uh, Adam Nawaki has made because yes. um, if you look, by the time Aka in the, he was young and then uh, this, mm. the same woman, she was the one who was in government with Chilova. And they are the people who knew how the they did with our resources, our minds yes. and everything. When you call somebody yes. to evaluate, it doesn't mean that person will give you a value, but you won't tell you yes. to say you sell a thing at a lesser price. So it's yes. very much embarrassing for a woman who is uh, in an opposition party to accuse another opposition leader instead of yes. fighting for the Zambia and also they fight together so that they can collect the system of governance in Zambia. But now it means yes. some of us are handbaggy politicians which you cannot even understand what they yeah. think. They don't mean anything mm. good about Zambia. We can see yeah. the maturity since I've started the following Akainde. I have seen mm. the maturity now to say is ready to lose the country. Now, what is yes. happening? They are trying by all means to put a lot of things in on his head to make yes. his name very dirty. But as as mm. people who understand and who know the pain which we are passing through, as people who run the businesses, we have seen how our businesses are corrupt. This is the time now we need to start thinking otherwise. Because each and every department, especially us who are direct with the government in dealing with our businesses, you find that the same government officials are the people who take, uh, take over our businesses. They, are, uh, they have grabbed all our clients from different countries because for them, they offer less prices and most of them, they don't even pay what we can ask small businessmen we pay. They do everything for free. So what Madam Nawako has said, I'm very much disappointed to hear those words coming from, from her. I think she must be very much ashamed mm -hmm. not to accuse yes. an innocent person in such a manner. She needs first to introspect mm. in her mind and it, it try to reflect back mm. to say what caused this and what time this happened because this happened by the time she was in government. She was a minister in government. Yeah. She was the member of the cabinet. Yeah. Now, how can you continue mm. accusing a wrong person who was, who was not even in, in a government? If somebody comes to me to say, how much mm -hmm. are you going to charge me? If you can evaluate maybe a house, you can evaluate anything. But you are going to find that once I tell him the mm -hmm. price, it's up to the owner to sell at two kwacha or seven million kwacha. But for me, I'll tell him yes. to say this house or this dog which you have, it is going at 5,000 kwacha. 
it's up to that person who is in power. By that time, him him does in power, do not a kind. So why they are putting yeah. a lot of yeah. happy politics in Zambia, which are making now innocent people to suffer? Yeah. I was going through mm. this market, you can see how quach has depreciated like no man's business. Yeah. If you can the poor less mm. the current among all in Africa, second yeah. from the last. That is a shame yeah. to our nation. Second, second, second poorest in, in the world. Mm -hmm. Currency. Our currency is so, doing so badly now. Yeah, it's, I think it's an embarrassment. It's an embarrassment mm -hmm. to our mm -hmm. government to continue accusing a okay, person so instead of putting our economy. Thank you so much for your contribution, most... African Pride. Let, let's okay, just have okay. um, Getsy commenting. Just hold on your thought. Let's have Getsy commenting. Get Getsy's, get how are you? Getsy's, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Because people keep you. Hello. I'm fine. Also, Getsy's is a girl. Wow. Hi, Hello, how are you? I am. I'm well and you. Uh, <laughs> I'm just like joined from a uh, Cape Town oh, here. I'm um, based here. Oh, wow. And like I've been following what has well, been happening you. from home. <laughs> While I was working, that's when I was watching the uh the conference of Nawaki of what she was saying. So, yeah, like I had time to sit and listen to what she was saying, and it was all crap. I may say I for one, I feel whatever she was saying. The same time that she claimed she was young, when whatever was happening in her, happened, I feel whatever she was saying, the same time. Hold on. Okay. You can speak now. All right. Okay. So okay. Uh, I'm saying, yeah, I joined in and yeah, I. Having... Yeah. Okay. So uh, the line is a uh, too big. Okay, yeah okay so uh, i'm saying whatever nawako was saying in whatever address she has she was addressing i don't know to who it is just crap to me simply because when this uh privatization, uh, privatization was being done she was also as yeah. much as hh was involved she was involved if she saw mm. any wrong in it she would uh, she would and uh she would have uh, and stand and to say no to this because of abcd but because it suited her and she also benefited for the fact that she has not multiplied what she benefited when she was in government it's and not our issue currently like, at this current situation where we are at we are not looking at what hh has done in in the past i'll give you a good example i've seen one comment that was passing uh, on the screen this uh, girl said yeah. um uh, for the fact, I, I don't, she said something like she cannot trust uh, HH. And I commented, I yeah. want to say the same mm -hmm. way we did not trust SATA. I think we had an issue when we were moving uh, UMMD from power. I used to stay in South mm -hmm. Africa. I had traveled. I campaigned for, 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 for PHF. But not just I want to benefit. No, it's just because I want to better my country. When I go home, I want to have a good mm -hmm. country. Okay, and even this time around, I'm going to travel the way I monitor their votes for PF. That's the way I'm gonna monitor my votes in a mass deal where, where it is uh, uh, our location where I vote from. I'm going to protect those votes yes. for HH. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, this is a time that we're not looking at what a person has done. HH was in government, but mm -hmm. for, her, for how long? And he was a consultant, meaning he had people he was reporting to. He didn't have an opportunity for him to make a decision. And he was young. Mm -hmm. You understand? But we are not mm -hmm. going to be, to be holding him responsible for what he has done in the past. I'm not going to hold you for, what, for your past to say, no, you cannot have this future. You cannot stand as an MP because of what you did in the past. That's wrong. So whoever feels, especially to the youths, I'm pleading to them. If you feel yes. you are a youth and you're expecting to have a generation, please, this next year, this year, you should be able to campaign on behalf of <laughs> the party that is making sense in your life. 
if you love the idea of your family, you hear one of your family members going to bed on an empty stomach, or maybe they don't have electricity for 12 hours, 24 hours. The meat in the, fr in the fridge, it's frozen. People are dying like no man's business. When you go to the hospitals, the building they are building, they'll build this year after six months, it will collapse. Then they need to redo it again. Just, just like wasting resources. You build a big yeah. hospital without medicine, what's that? People are dying. There's no problem in Zambia. I have a family there and sometimes you need to buy medicine from here to send to Zambia. The same way Zimbabweans are doing here, sometimes I do that. I send medicine from here to Zambia because no, there it is expensive, which is not making mm -hmm. me happy as a youth. Here I'm having yes. kids who oh, I know that I'm a Zambian. Even if I'm not there, one day my kids will return back to Zambia. Yes. Where well, then they will, they will come find the country is being ruled by Chinese. The all land is given yes. to Chinese. So if you are a wise youth and you go on her page and send nonsense comments to say, no, because HH is this because of that, then you are not thinking. Because that uh, MMD or wh whatever who is in, in power now, they don't even know you are existing. It is your taxpayers' money they are wasting. And it's just because, you know, you know, really the, 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 the only problem I found with uh, my fellow Zambian youths, huh? It's yes. because those who've not traveled to go out, they don't yes. know how hard it is when you are you go outside of Zambia, you go in another country, when you become a foreigner, you don't know how life is. That's why sometimes even those Wakaponia of PF cadres, they've never traveled. I think they just moved from, I don't know, uh, they come to Lusaka, if copper belt, they come to Saka, they find the market. There, they are cadres. They are given beers when uh, campaigning. Then they feel they have power and they have authorities. It's just because they've not traveled and they've never moved. If you move, then you will be able to know that no, this decision we are making, it's not right. And you'd want to make it right by your family, by your next generation. So now, what, okay. what she was saying is just jealousy yeah. to me because now, yeah. what she's been uh, in politics for how long even before hh came in politics huh by yeah. the time now i was competing with a mazoka the late yeah. she, she is the person she was competing with that's why even that uh who is this who was the spokesperson of her this antonio antonio left her because she doesn't she doesn't even have direction she's a person yeah. who just opens her mouth to say anything that she wants to say and she's a person who just wants to eat where she says that she can eat so she yes. knows that if we come in power forward, HH, then mm -hmm. she won't have anything to do with the government. Yes. She can be yes. in opposition, but somehow, somewhere, she's benefiting from this corrupt government. Because in opposition, you cannot be fighting your fellow opposition leader. That's wrong. Mm. That's wrong. Okay. Thank you, so, thank you so much. I've come across an article which is saying, uh, you know, Hichilema Nawakwe Clash on Radio. I never bought Lima Bank House. Um, now, Aku is the opposition um, um, president, Forum for Democracy and Development, FDD. Uh, she's a leader and she challenged, uh, you know, Mr. Haka in H. Lema uh, to give an account of the source of his wealth. Um, now, Aku, who has not enjoyed a cozy relationship with H. Lema since. Uh, the fallout of the UDA alliance in 2006 uh, has alleged that each lemma's proceeds were part of the benefits from the privatization of uh, government property. The FDD leader was a minister in uh, President Frederick Chiluwa's government that hired Hichilema and others as consultants during privatization process. Speaking um, when she featured on Hot FM in Lusaka on Thursday, and Nawakwe accused Hichilema of benefiting from privatization of state-owned mining firms and also dubiously acquired state properties, including his Kablonga mansion. Like, does she have the evidence for all this? She let's doesn't. have, let's have um, uh, Mercy speak, please. Hi, Mercy. Hello, hello, everyone. Um, How are you? I'm well. Um, I'm, I'm getting a bit of a cold, but I think I'll I'll live. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you will. 
Yes, yeah. Messi is an amazing supporter. Okay, amazing, amazing. What's your comment on this matter, Messi? Uh, well, my, my comment is um, slightly different. I'm actually thinking uh, we need to look at things objectively. We need to take emotion out of it because you've got to remember the Zambian people are tired of corruption. And so trusting anybody that is um, a candidate for presidency is not going to come easy. So they need um, some level of reassurance because everyone that's come along, they've made all of these promises and in the end they haven't delivered. So uh, the Zambian people have ended up being disappointed. Then another thing I wanted to add is as Zambian people in politics, we're not used to asking difficult questions or anytime someone asks a difficult question, it, it is considered as an attack on, an, on another person rather than uh, and someone having an interest or they're just seeking to clarify information or they are seeking some level of reassurance. So not everything should be viewed as an attack. So um, regarding what was being said by um, Nawakwi, I'm, I'm, I haven't listened to all of it in detail, but um, from what I have grasped, um, she seems to infer that... Um, HH was somehow involved in some activity uh, which may be questionable and he's benefited from that when he was working as a, as a consultant uh, during the privatization of those um, mines. That, that, that's what I'm getting from this. Um, but what I wanted to say is um, in previous questions about what, how uh, HH made his wealth, uh, there was a video that I was watching uh, yesterday. I think he was being interviewed by uh, a pastor. I can't remember his name. I think it's Pastor Chiluwa or someone. And he had played a clip uh, where HH was asked how he made his wealth. And he didn't really address that because he felt at the time that it wasn't important. And he wanted to focus on other um, issues to do with the country. But then this is this is something that came back because it was viewed as a non-response. So when someone is asking a question, especially about how you made your wealth, I think it's only fair um, to be able to answer that. You've got to remember as well, we've been criticizing PF. It is very, very clear to us that um, the current government is corrupt and um, it's, it's actually even worse than the corruption that we saw in MMD. So if we're going to be standing and criticizing the corrupt activities that are going on, if we're going to be advocating uh, for the fact that people that are going to take up public office need to um, go to undergo some type of lifestyle audit, I think it is only fair that we also ask questions from people who are um, seeking um, high office or the highest office in the land. Just we ask them to clarify some issues where we may have some concerns. So to ask. Uh, or to seek clarity on those issues is not an attack. We just want to know, can we be comfortable with this person? When we are going to the polls, are we going to have a clear mind? And can we be in a position where we can make um, informed decisions? With regards to um, uh, political parties that are in opposition attacking each other, um, that is not a surprise because every political party whether you're in opposition, you don't expect opposition to band together. You've got to remember each of these individual political parties are trying to get um, into government. So that they, it is not, it's really not in their interest um, to not bring up issues which they think um, are surrounding HH. In a similar way, it is not in their interest to be silent on issues which are surrounding uh, PF. So each individual political party is out to make sure that they get into government. So this is not surprising that um, um, Edith Nawaki would raise uh, questions around that. So what I would say is, it is important to just come out and clarify. It doesn't hurt UPND, it doesn't hurt HH. It just answers questions that other sections of society may have, not necessarily the entire country, but people who just want clarity and reassurance before they vote. So there's nothing harmful in coming out and explaining that. And the question I think people seem to be asking, because on the explanation that HH gave was that he made some corporate investments 
and then um, later on he invested in farming and in addition to that he got education and in addition to that he's worked very hard so i don't think there were so many questions surrounding that explanation i think the main question from other sections of society was where did the initial money come from when that first step was made to make corporate invest investments before you moved on to farming before you moved on to working very hard so there is nothing wrong in asking that question and seeking um clarity and then um i just wanted to comment quickly because there was vincent um obviously mercy obviously you yes. know like you know you live in the uk you live in the uk and i've, I've also been in the uk for many years um mm. we need to declare assets in, in in england um especially when you're working in in a public office and uh, if uh, you want to claim any benefits the government needs to know what you own so in this case yeah. obviously there is a way in which it can be done but with it is nawaki it somehow sounds like an attack um I, i'll read something for you because i wanted you to uh, somebody named jericho on our whatsapp group monali constituency uh said nawaki has been personal from the year 2006 when she lost her bid uh, to head the UDA political alliance to HH. Ever since that time, she has never liked him. To me, that is hatred, which, which should not be exhibited by leaders seeking to govern the country. It is people like her who are turning to dictators. Like someone has already said, leaders should practice issue-based politics so that people can analyze to see who has better policies for the country. It is only in Zambia where opposition parties can form an alliance with the party in government to fight the party that appears to be strong enough to beat the ruling party. This can be described as insanity in the developed world. So um, that's, that was a comment from somebody who's watching our program and the person is commenting on a WhatsApp group because I sent links on WhatsApp groups. Uh, what yeah, would you I say agree. about... Yes. Um, I do agree with that? that. Yeah, I do agree with that mm -hmm. in that it's coming from a person who's got their own mm -hmm. agenda because of the fact that they're in the political in another political party. So, um yes. there were some comments that people were making and saying, how can you attack someone who's in opposition just like you? That that shouldn't be a surprise. Yeah. It is expected because each individual political party, they have a candidate who, who wants to be president at the end of the day. So they will not be seeking to make another uh, political party, whether in opposition or current government, they will not be doing any work to make you get into power because they're actually looking to get into power themselves. So personally, I don't expect um, in, individual political parties to be working for the opposite party to ensure that they succeed. That is just something that I, I don't expect. But what I was saying for the electorate yeah, or different sections of society, they may have some questions which just need to be answered. There's nothing yeah. wrong in asking difficult <laughs> questions. Yes. The, yeah, thing that, is, that, with, um, the thing is with, with Zambian politics, from my observation, uh, the, 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 the fighting doesn't even exist among opposition leaders, it even exists within pol the political parties where people are fighting for the same position and they will fight you and they will use any means of propaganda to destroy your mm. reputation within the party. And yet we, we are asking for one thing, we're asking for one goal. We need a change of the system of governments in Zambia. And, and, and it gets me worried, Mercy, and you know, you've always said this on this platform to say, look, we need to know what these people will bring when they are in office. It's because we don't want a recycled leadership. You know, mm. a few days ago, we had somebody who was a very strong PF um, cadre. He was also trying to, you know, sit for a position somewhere and he was treated badly. And he's jumped, you know, to UPND. And I, the same thing that happened to MMD um, and uh, PF might happen to UPND if we are not careful, where we have um, 
PF people running to UPND and because we, you know, it's everyone's democratic right. People are embraced, and we don't want the same thing. Because then, what will happen is the same characteristics of people stealing, and uh, you know, using corruption, force, intimidation, might come back at a later stage when we have elections like this year. I've had cutters chasing after me, looking for me. Uh, today, I've had police look police coming to the venue where I met a few people trying to disrupt the meeting because they've been they've been sent by Edith Nawaki, by the way, to disrupt any meetings that I'm supposed to, uh, you know, go to. So when we reach that stage and we invite this type of people who are part of uh, PF now and we invite them to UPND, I'm afraid we might experience the same things, you know, when we are about to um, go for another election. Uh, let's have yeah. Maurice. Um, uh, sorry, I just yeah. wanted to say yes, quickly that um, uh, the, the having mm. said what I said about asking difficult questions and there being nothing wrong with it, it's just important before you vote, so you vote as a well-informed person. But having said that, um, as a party, I've seen uh, UPND in terms of a CV. I think they do have a a, a strong candidate. candidate. Um, with good experience mm -hmm. for presidency. They've also been very clear on what they plan to do on mining. Uh, I've been mm -hmm. listening to interviews yeah. where they've talked about setting up a plant, uh, which could cost up mm -hmm. to, I think, $10 million for manganese, and it mm -hmm. would help uh, improve the value. So you would be selling manganese, I think, from rather than $50, I think, per ton, the, the price goes up to, yeah. I think, $1,500. So there are certain things which are now being communicated clearly of what the plan is for UPND if they come into power. They've talked about taxes. They're going to lower um, the, the um, yeah. payers you earn. And then they're also going to lower, yeah. uh, they're going to completely scrape the boho tax. So these are things that people are interested in. So if, you, if people hadn't been asking mm -hmm. these questions, you wouldn't really have had answers to them. So in the same way, if you have any doubt before you make that decision to vote, I think you should ask difficult questions. At the same time, bearing in mind, other political parties have their own agenda and they will be attacking each other. But your duty as someone who's going to be voting is to <laughs> seek clarity and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Okay. Um, that's what I wanted to say. Okay, thank you. Thank, so you. Much. thank you so much, Mercy. Let's have Morris speak quickly and then uh, we can have... Um, uh, Joanne has spoken already. Then we can have Davido. So please, let's have Maurice. How are you, Maurice? <clears throat> How are you, Maurice? Yes, Lily. Can can you hear me? Yes, I can. How are you? Good, good, guys. Uh, yeah, how are you, everybody? Nice. Yeah, it's uh, it's good to be here on this uh, on this channel here. I've been watching every time when you have a live stream. Today, I was like, no, 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 I need to jump in. Yeah, yeah, I need to jump in. I need to jump in. Yeah. Um. Oh, Zambia, 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 Zambia. Um, I'll start with uh, like 20, 2016, I went home. I'm here in South Africa, Cape Town. Yeah, um, 2016, I went home. You know, I didn't, I didn't know Edgar Lungu uh, in, 20, in 2016 before, before the campaign and stuff when I just heard uh, Edgar Lungu, Edgar Lungu, who is this? And then, he, ah, you know, because we loved Sata so much, Michael Sata, and then we were like, ah, you know what? We'll give this guy a shot, you know, for Michael Sata to trust this guy. Ah, I think, you know, he's got what it takes. But yeah, no, 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 no. Those roads, when I, when I went home, if you can see the roads, they are, they are constructing the roads, you know, it st still doesn't, you know, like there's <laughs> dust everywhere. Even where, even where the new roads mm -hmm. are, there's dust, dust everywhere. Then I, I was telling people in Zambia, like, guys, okay, I know, you know, you've been, you know, you are here, you haven't traveled anywhere. When you see a road like this, and then you celebrate, 
then you know but come on there's dust everywhere here you leave your house by the time you you go to you get to the taxi taxi station here i mean like a taxi rank a bus stop something like that you you know sapato zambua and then come on you know you should come to south africa you should see how how south africa has done their, their country that's when you know exactly what development is but anyway you know because we love that uh, we're like okay let's go let's go don't you, i mean uh, so i was i was there did i was there i was there like let's go we did we know we, we supported the pf i was pf and then i uh, 2016 the same 2016 after the votes after we voted and then uh, yeah i came back home yeah now uh, up to now i'm still in south africa but again along the way uh, again you could just see you know because we read news every day so you can just see that things are going wrong there's corruption this and that mm. Mm -mm. anyway um yeah we 2021 i've decided it's pf i mean it's um it's upnd sorry uh it's upnd h h chave yeah yeah ni forward so uh Lillian, i wanted to, to tell you to say um uh, I heard you last time. You were saying that when the when the what uh, when the when they open for campaigning, maybe you know the red T-shirt to run out, something like that. You know, so I thought maybe when coming, I can get the red T-shirt. I can see available with my you know anything that I can, anything that I could. You know, like if I can be able to get maybe twenty. You know, okay, I'll bring yeah, them for you. <laughs> I'll bring them for you yeah. so that you know you yeah. Yeah, you can give the people in Munari or yeah. elsewhere. That's yeah. Good. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. It's really good. Continue. Just continue. Continue doing it. And um yeah. Um yeah, and the other thing, you know, um I was uh, I was I was planning to come and do the the what uh, uh god prospecting uh like uh, with uh, using a god detector. So I was planning to come and do that in Zambia, but I'm like, ah, maybe I must wait until HH must come in power because PF yes. ah, they like bullying, you know. You know they can once they see that on on, on YouTube, and then they will they will look for you and you know like what they do to those miners. Yeah, but uh, I was thinking maybe I must get the what the the uh, the gold license maybe so that I can be free. But I don't know how much it costs in PF. I'm sure it costs a lot. I don't think I can afford it, but uh, yeah, I, I heard HH saying, uh, you know, lowering the price of things so that yes. the business can can be run uh, properly and affordable. Yeah, so that's why I'm, I'm thinking maybe I should um, maybe I should come to Zambia wait, when, wait when HH wins, or maybe I should just wait come a little before. If you love uh, your life, I must wait, wait a little bit. Uh, if you love your uh, life, Lily. wait a little bit. Lily. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, like seriously, I, I, I want, I just want to be part of making Zambia the great country. I've lived here in South Africa in Cape Town. That lady who spoke before me, I, I didn't get her name. She said she's in Cape Town. She can agree with me. Cape Town is beautiful. I mean, this is Africa too. We are in Africa. But if you see the way it looks, it looks. If you see the way it looks, comparing to where we come from, it looks like a different place. Like, like it's not Africa. How they 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 are not there are people uh, live here just uh, like in Zambia but I mean look at our country but we also oh have uh, like okay. every okay. time in our uh, in our Zambian party like uh like there's a lot of things that happen even here Lily, where we are like pf are just taking like it's too much of them even here in cape town we are uh, away from home but we are bullied here in cape town by pf cutters Ooh. really yes sure, man. yeah uh, i'll mm, go in your bad. inbox and i'll send you something because i can't just say it here but when i send them you'll be able to really? understand and maybe you will even come in because wow. like we are Wow. I can even give you names of those people. Like even uh, the, 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 the the one who is uh, the, the, the president of Zasa, uh, the, the commissioner, the, the, the commissioner, like the, a lot of people there, they are in Jobbik, like the, the, the whole thing is happening in Jobbik, but there's a lot of things going on, corruption, a lot of things that are happening that are not even worthy of, and they don't even make us proud to be Zambia.
As I'm telling you, I'm not even in any Zambian group here in South Africa. I'm just saying on my own. Because of what? Because of these issues. Yeah, me well, too. Me too. Yeah, yeah. So he knows what I'm talking of. <laughs> Uh, okay, thank you so much. Let's have um, one of our brothers that has I'm been ready. A long time. Let's I'm have ready. Nandi. Hello. Nandi, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Are you, are you able to listen to me? Hello? Yes, Nandi, if you can make a conversation, please. Yes. Okay. Um, you know, it, it, it's so stressing. I'm telling you, every time when I'm seated in the office, I get very really upset every time I see this, this, this messaging popping up here and there. You know, I'm somebody like my previous, my previous friend who was saying that he voted for PF in 2011. I trusted the big man, the old man, my soul, rest in peace, Mr. Sata. Now, just some recent, after just being in this, this, this man, I didn't even vote for him. I was so much... I was so much inquisitive. I was not clear in my mind to think that if I vote, this man's going to bring progress. I was so skeptical. And I decided to say, no, I can't vote. I was just, a, I would say, a polling agent by that time. And I observed and I made sure that all, all the election went well, despite it was voted in. But listen to what has transpired now. It's like we have got criminals in the government who are trying to do all possible means to maintain their, their stance. So right now, to me, what I'm observing, this issue of HH uh, is just a propaganda that people can be moved away from talking about real issue, and then they just keep on discussing the issue of HH. You know, we have got a lot of problems, especially when the cost of living is like this. Right now, I'm telling you, a pocket of cement is almost 120 in town, in, in real town areas. But when you go in villages, it's almost 130, 140 is going up to that time. That that price, that that price, that pricing, uh, 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 the, the price the price tag which is done on, on cement so what is happening there's no control economically socially everything is becoming a propaganda to do what they want and as long as they are in power they can do anything so what i'm seeing is the the most vulnerable ones are the people in the rural areas who are not getting information which is real and which is on time we need the situations where people are able to go to the villagers and to the village and try to explain to our colleagues there to say this is this is what is happening because there's a gap between uh rural areas and urban area there's a very big gap when it comes to 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 knowing the the, the political environment what is happening so then they vote based on on appearance but they don't vote based on real issues so this is where the, i remember mr sata had to to jump in and realize the the secret and that's what made him now to win the 2011 election because he realized that the best way is to speak to these rural people. I'm telling you, Mr. Sata, spend all his last times of elections in the villages explaining to people there were a lot of propagandas. No, he bring he was going to bring war, he's going to bring this and that and that and that. And when this man got into power, he never even jailed people who were even those that were said that they're going to be jailed. So this is something that is very, 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 very uh, important to understand that we need to really work on this gap between the the people in the rural areas and the people in urban areas we need to really change our perception because right now they are feeding on the ignorance of the people in the rural areas and this is why they are trying to do all their waste to make sure that they remain in power but my my worry is those people in the in the in the economy in the economic running uh, the people that drive the economy are the ones who are feeling the very slightest big, big, big uh, hit of the of the decision that they are making, the policies that they are driving every day. They just wake up, whoever dreams of doing something, they just end up doing something. So right now, I can assure you, even this topic, I do even prefer we, we even stop talking about it because they, that's what they are trying to achieve. Us to talk about how we are going to defend that kind of this issue, and the issues is look at the poor. The poor, the, the poor Zambian, what the people are suffering when it comes to, 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 to putting the food at the table. And people, people are suffering because people there, like these other politicians, they are stealing every day. And when they steal, they find ways of, you don't, you don't talk about it. Look at that, what they're doing to Mr. Kambuidi. Mr. Kambuidi has got, he's got an issue of COVID, but they don't, they don't want to, they don't want him to keep on talking. They want to keep him silent because that's their propaganda. 
So this issue of HIV, they know it's very innocent, but what they're trying is to us to be discussing about this issue. They're talking about their problems this we are creating for this country. I think this is what I'm seeing. Um, thank you so much for your contribution. Can we please have the video, uh, Bright, and then Conrad, and then we can close because it's getting late now and I've got an early morning tomorrow. Uh, Bright, how are you? And the video. Hi, Davido. Uh, check your sound, Davido. Hi, Bright. Conrad, are you there? Yeah. Conrad, are you there? Okay. Um, yes, I'm here. here. Okay, so Conrad, just speak Can a, you get a bit. Uh, Ashenique, are you ready? Yep. Yep. Okay, so can we have can we have Shanique, Conrad, uh, Jadu, uh, yes, I'll put my my camera off, but don't worry, just carry on discussing. I'm just just near So can you please have can we please have um Shanique, can you please speak? Um, I don't even know where, know where to start because I wanted to also just go back to yesterday, last night when you were live on Facebook. Of I was going through all the comments reading and I was really angry with you. I was feeling your pain with the way people, I was, I was reading the comments. First of all, hi everybody, I'm sorry about that. That was very rude. I was reading the comments. I'm actually reading the comments right now, both on Facebook and on YouTube. And I'm not agreeing with a lot of things that people are saying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we've lost her. She'll be back. Okay, Dreddudu, can you please speak? Maybe she's lost her battery. Redudu, can you please speak? Speak up louder. Speak louder, please. Okay. <coughs> Hi, David. Can I come? Say something. Davido. Hi, can you see can you hear me now? Yes, say something Davido. Uh, yes. Um uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to also share my concern concerning today's uh, message which was being uh discussed by Edith Nawapi. Yes, uh just like what others have said, I think the whole issue here is just more like a propaganda. Uh, we need to just focus on um, things to develop our country. As you can see this time around, no matter how we're going to talk about uh, the issue of privatization, it is not going to solve the issue of our economy. I think it's high time that we started also uh, thinking on how we can try to revamp our economy as a country. We are more we keep on talking about past of which that even failing to provide the the evidence to them they Keep on. And I choose. Young people. 
keep on touching other people's names. Sorry, I was on mute. Sorry, I was saying that. Sorry, can you please have Mr. Um, if we can have Mr. Kwachangwe, then Conrad, um, right? Shanika, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm here. Sorry, uh, okay. Yes, I'm here. Okay, so let it be the yeah. order of Shanika. Mr. Kwachangwe, okay. Conrad, right? Okay, so I just want to read something that has been said on Facebook here by Mulenga Bwaria. She says, exactly, but most UPND, including me, now have stopped thinking. The big man thinks for them. Whatever he says is right. I mean, where is she getting, like, where are people getting this kind of things? Where is she getting this comment from? I mean, you are your own person. So everything that is happening right now, everything that is being said, everything that is being done is actually really nerve-wracking. It makes one upset because I'm not in Zambia. I'm outside of Zambia. And it seems like a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of people in diaspora are the ones that are busy talking. Meanwhile, I'm not saying that yes. the Zambian youth are not talking, but mostly it's the people in diaspora that are speaking up while the people on the ground they're busy making fun of this they're busy making jokes they're busy making it look like it's not they're doing nothing let's all stand together and do something let's work together let's support the right party we we put in Michael Sato. they're saying they don't trust how they don't trust hh how would they vote hh in when they don't trust him you voted Michael Sato in when you didn't trust him Yet, why can't you vote? Why can't you vote this person in? Where is this lady? Where are? Why are all these old people coming out of the woodworks and coming out to now point a, now to to say H H? Where did H H get money? Where did he do this? Where did he do that? That is his business. He has explained himself, hasn't he? He has said we have been told where he got it. So why can't he leave? Okay, Shanika, so signal. Maybe it's a battery. Uh, if we can have Bright. Bright, are you there? Bright. Bright. Yeah, if Bright can speak this well, then Kwacha mm -hmm. and um, we can conclude. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm mad. Yeah, what for me, mad? Okay, people are losing signal. Um. Uh, it's it's all about the mindset, uh, poor mindset. People have poor mindset where they can say what they have to say about whatever. I've been speaking on my YouTube channel for a long time now, and people are just getting to know me now, and I've been speaking and speaking, I'm speaking and speaking, and I'm still speaking. And like, you know, people have stated on this platform right now to say, look, we need to focus more on how we can change government and how things can change. And this is all propaganda trying to divert us um, from the main cause you know, of our discussions, which is we want to see change in Zambia. Uh, so let me just allow uh, Rose Limerick to speak. And then Shanique you know, can join Biswell. 
Thank you, everybody um, on the platform. What I can only say, thank you so much, Lily, for the work you're doing in actually in Zambia. And uh, it really is for Zambians, it's not for you. Like for you, you lived in England, but you leave your comfort zone. And this issue which came today, I was just thinking about where did all this come from? What did they speak before that? And then they are coming today. The only thing I can say to the Zambians, they have to think twice because if they bring the PF back, they are gonna suffer more than this because there is no food in Zambia, there is no water, there is nothing. And then they keep on bullying people. And uh, the president is not saying anything. Why can they try, even if they are saying that they, they don't trust a church? For me, I live here, I trust him. That's the only thing we can say to people and uh, just to encourage them. They have to vote. They have to just try to, to change the party than keep the same party whereby they, they keep on insulting them all the time and they don't give them nothing. They just give them chitenge and the 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 fifty kwacha and then they put them back in the in the in the office it's a shame to the people who are saying or who are standing because i hear there was something i heard yesterday they were saying that we fought for this uh pf and they're not gonna take it from us people mm -hmm. are the people they are the one who put you in the office you don't put yourself there so yes. they have to respect the citizen. The only thing because they are putting the citizen down because they think that the citizen, they are nothing. Mr. President is in the office because of the citizen. Bomali Sambo is in the office because of somebody's vote. That's why he's there. Okay. So Thank that's you the so only much. thing I can tell the people who are on the ground, they have to speak. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Auntie, for your contribution. Uh, this one's just a quick one. Uh, if we can have um, Bright, Nick, okay. Bizwa, are you there? Bizwa, are you there? We've lost Bizwa. We've lost Bright. Uh, if we can have uh, Mr. Kwachangwe, Shenik, yeah. Mr. Kwachangwe, Shenik, and then we can close the stream. Thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm sorry I've just come very late. Um, but just to say for all the Zambians, you know, um, I've just come back from Western Union and I was trying to send some money to one of my niece there in Zambia. And I was shocked because um, uh, I sent only 50 pounds and the exchange rate so far today was uh, for 50 pounds. She's going to get 1,152 plus plus. That's for 50 pounds. I was really, really shocked. And, and this, for me, goes to show that this is... Um, the economy that is totally dying because um, if 50 pound UK can give uh, Zambian 1,000 plus plus, it shows that we are in dire, dire, in big, big problem. Yeah. You know, uh, and I think um, it's uh, Zambians, we're on a crossroad. And the only thing I can say is it's very, very important for the Zambians to vote wisely. Um, for, because we are religious in Zambia, there's a scripture that says, I put before you life and death, choose life. And I think we have seen what uh, the present go uh, government has done to Zambia. It has it is actually killed the economy. It has killed the infrastructure. Institutions actually are all dying. It's like uh, everything in Zambia is suffocating under this PF. And I think it's up to the Zambia and themselves to choose life. It says what Zambia needs is a new start. You know, we just can't continue with the same 
status quo and hope for the better. Uh, it takes political will to change lives. And uh, it, this uh, idea that PF has to continue in power is just uh, baloney. You know, it's not uh, supposed to be like that because, uh, you know, whether he's a president or minister, we are, they are all civil servants, as somebody has said, you know. And if they fail to perform, there's no way that you should continue to be in power. You know, it's really shambolic that, you know, uh, even when the economy is dying, people still want to hold on to life, to this death. So I think uh, for us who are in the diaspora, as I've said time and time again, uh, you know, we are also affected because we have family there and we know the suffering that the uh, German people are going through. And I think... Uh, we really pray and hope that uh, next year, come next year, people will choose something different. We need something different. HH is also um, a Zambian citizen. He can also do something for, why can't they try him? You know, uh, maybe he can bring something new to the, to the nation. And if we find that uh, after five years he's not performing, there will be another person. The Zambians, uh, we've got some very good, bright Zambians who can perform. If SH yeah. doesn't perform or any other part doesn't perform, like PF is not performing, we kick them out and try other people can do, can yeah. put the, the, the yeah. country forward. You know? sure. It's not as if we will yes. be held hostage by the FF. And what is that's what's happening. The yes. PF want to hold the Zambian hostage in their system and keep mm -hmm. taking the country on a slope, in the slope that will kill the nation. You know, we have a lot of yes. debt, we have a lot of battles to fight. Uh, our health sector is dying. Our law institutions is dying, like the police is dying. In nearly everything is dying in, in our country. So we need a new start. And that's why we're advocating for a new beginning for the Zambians. And I think I just pray and hope that next year we will not be having where somebody sends 50 pounds, some the, the quacha is gone the way it is gone. It's really sad. To see mm. like this, but for us, when the diaspora can say to the Zambian people, it's good for us, you know. Mm. But for you, Lee, yes. who are on the ground, exactly. absolutely, I, I've sent mm. 50 pounds. My niece will get one thousand something there, it's good. But how many people have yeah. the privilege that I have? Not many people have that privilege, no. so it's up to us, Zambians on the ground, to take advantage of this opportunity that we mm. have. Somebody who, who has proved himself in business, that he has made it, why can't we give him a chance to do something different for the country? Yes, so yeah. I hope... Yeah, yeah, the writing is on the wall. The writing is on the wall. PF has failed. The president is muted. Yes. I don't know when he will speak. Um, so that goes to show how much he cares for the Zambian people or he's taking the Zambian people for granted. He can't speak anything. <laughs> so it's, it's shocking, really. It's really shocking. So yeah. it's either it's either we choose death or we choose life, and that's the this what this election is all about. This is really my word for tonight. Thank you so much, Mr. Kwancha, for your contribution. If we can just have um, a Shenik closing, and um, yeah, get C and Messi, yeah, and then I, I, I can go to bed. Okay, um, I think I even forgot what I wanted to say earlier, but um, like, why are we people questioning HH and like, why are we questioning him? Why are we, why are the people saying he can't be trusted when we voted Sata in and he did, we didn't trust him, but we voted them in. And now we're sitting with this big problem, with this, which is the PF, we're sitting with this big problem and we need to fix it. We should stand together and fix the problem and not go backwards. We need a person that is educated. We need a person that knows what they're doing. And looking at the way things are, HH knows what he's doing. He knows what he stands for. He knows what he wants to do for the Zambian people. So let's vote him in. Let's vote for him. Let him be in power and let him prove himself. Just the way Sata proved himself. Yes, thank, you. thank you so much. And, you know, a person like Edith Nawaku, she's about 61 years old. And I'm just yes, thinking, and why do we, know, these yes, guys, why, why, they were ministers. When, when, you know, they were ministers when we were kids, and they're still fighting. 
relevant. Exactly. You know, exactly. Why, we don't and need why, them. Exactly. And why isn't that, that we I think, I think there should be a law that should be passed down to say when you reach a certain age, you should not be in politics. Because why are the old people still in politics? I remember yeah. Edith Nawaz. I remember her, and I was really young. Why is she still there? And why yeah. did she only come out of the she's election? And we still, we still giving her the ear. I mean, yeah. even the, the media is still going there to give her the attention that she's seeking for. I mean, really now. When they, they should, I mean, it, it should just pass something. Like, even our, even the Zambian people, we don't know, we don't know our rights. We don't know our rights. If HH comes in power, he should make sure that the Zambian people know their rights. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so All much, right. Janik, for your contribution. Um, okay. I have more to uh, say, but I don't want to keep you because it's late. No problem. So if we can just have Getsy comment a little bit, and then uh, Mercy, then we can close the stream, please. Thank you. I think she's still on mute. I can't can't hear you. Can't hear you. Me? Yeah. You can't hear me. Now we can. Now I can. Now yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah. All right. No. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So I'm saying I, I only hope uh when this video go viral, then it is going to reach every Zambian for them to take time to check whatever is happening in the country in, and they should maybe calculate it if at all they won't, won't work so hard like for next year to take out PF from government, they should ask themselves, those who have kids, where will their kids be in the next five years? Because Zambia will be like Zimbabwe, believe you me. If we won't act now, then we are going to, to, to be the second uh, Zimbabwe. Yeah, like in the Southern Africa. So I, I mm. think it's up to us, like the boat is in our hands. I'm so very much uh, stressed such that the borders in South Africa are closed. They're only going to open next year. I think what I need, I don't know about the voters. Are we going to use the same voters cards we used last year, uh, last time, or are they going to change? That's where now my worry is. Definitely, I have my NRC and I have the first, have uh, the first voters card that I was using. But I don't know, is it going to change? Because the online thing, it's not even working. Someone sent me the link, I think, uh, in our group where we have the WhatsApp for Western Cape and uh, South Africa in particular for uh, UPND. I checked it. It's not even working. It didn't even take me anywhere. It's not working. So that wh whatever they are trying to do online, it's not working. So since it's not working, what about people are outside the country? If they are going to say registration is going to take place within 30 days or 60 days or something, I don't know whatever they are saying. What about us who are not in the country? What will happen to us? And how are we going to vote? Because we want to vote. May I always come back home to vote? I do. It's my right. I cannot just be saying I don't want PF. I need to cast my votes. And if I cast it, it's going to count. And obviously, even among us, I plead for you Zambians who are in Zambia, please take time to campaign even from your own pocket. Mm -hmm. Try to educate as much people you can educate it from the villages, the rural areas where there are no TV. That's where we always lose election people. Please take time to do that, even on your own. Please spread the news through your relatives, whoever you can, so that you give them hope. Tell them whenever we are passing through, it won't be passing. You won't pass through it when we cross this. Because we are just like we are at the bridge or maybe under the bridge and we need to cross over. And this is, we need to work to action so that, and it's in unit where we are going to do this. Uh, Lily, I'm so happy for the work that you are doing and I always support you. I always support you and I'm behind you. Thank you so you. much for your contribution. And I like it that you are fixed I like, you know, I like the courage that you have when you are talking, addressing, even in your videos, with authority. I like that. And Thank God you so you. much. And uh, the people of Kalikiliki have trained me today. I'm tired. But thank you so much for your support. You love yeah. everybody. I am so grateful. Um, Mercy, if you can finally close. And Duane, 
I need to go now. I need to sleep. <laughs> okay, I'll be very, very quick. What does your last <laughs> Yeah. Um, I, I just wanted what to are comment. What your last uh, Okay, I just wanted to comment very quickly. I saw yeah. a comment from uh, someone called Vincent Chola. I think it was on Facebook or YouTube. I'm not quite sure. Um, where he commented that um, yeah. the government asked HH to evaluate the mines, and he did. So uh, some people are asking, you know, what is wrong with that? I would say there is nothing wrong in doing a job that the government has hired you. What, if there are any questions that would arise in that scenario is in what capacity you were working. For instance, if you have your own company and the government hires that company to do an evaluation and they pay you a large fee for the job that you've done, absolutely nothing wrong, no questions asked there. But if you work for the government and at the same time you own another company, you've been asked to work as, um, as a consultant, you do your, your consulting work and um, they're asking about evaluation, you go and hire your own company while you're working for government, there would be questions around that. So uh, I don't know in what capacity HH was hired to work in the mines, whether he hired his own company while working for government or whether they just hired his company and he wasn't working for government. So I think it wouldn't hurt to get clarity on that. There's nothing wrong. That's the question Zambians should ask. If it comes from another political party who has their own agenda, then obviously people will, have, uh, will see through that and whether it's genuine or not. But in the interest of voting, I mean, we need to remember that you need an outright majority and people, individuals have different opinions. So to get more than 50%, you need to uh, clear the doubts that may be in minds of those people. So I don't think it would hurt to clarify this uh, little area. And then also my last point uh, would be to say that um, if what uh, um, Edith Nawaku is saying has any truth to it, she needs to bring evidence so we can see for ourselves. To speak without evidence, um, there is no strength mm. to that. And it actually hurts her. She looks like a liar because she can't produce the mm. evidence to convince the Zambian people. So if she, she knows anything, she needs to prove it. And I also wanted to say that um, what a person has done in their past, uh, whether they've transformed their life and they're running for high office, it doesn't mean that if there are questions around their past, they're not going to get through in the votes. We've seen that happen in the US where there were questions about Donald Trump's uh, tax returns. Mm -hmm. Um, he was one of the few uh, candidates who never, um, you know, disclosed them. And yet people voted for him to be president. He won. Mm -hmm. He's also a person that was deemed to be uh, glorifying sexual assault. Mm -hmm. We all know he made a statement, mm -hmm. grab yeah. women by their, you know, their, yeah. their private parts, yeah. you know. He still won mm -hmm. the presidency. So uh, I'm just saying yeah. that people can say things about you but it doesn't mean that you won't get through. But what you have to remember is that where you've had in the past um, elections where the result is very, very narrow, very close, if there are any doubts in sections mm -hmm. of society, mm -hmm. you need to come out and clarify that area so you can win the outright majority. Because at the moment, I haven't heard anything about an alliance uh, of the opposition party band parties banding together. Although I've heard from NDC, Dr. Kambwili said he's open, um, and he's ready to work with UPND, although UPND hasn't come out to say, yes, we're going to band with um, other political parties and form an, an alliance. That hasn't been the case. I'm not sure what's going on. There's, they're perhaps going for, you know, winning the overall majority. So if you're going in that direction, it is very, very important that if there's any doubts being raised, that you come out and clarify that. There's nothing wrong. As Zambians, we need to get used to asking difficult questions, not to see them as an attack, an attack if it's sections of society asking, they just want clarity. And then we can move on and do the change that we need. My question also to uh, Edith Nawabi is, um, I would like to see her come out with the same aggression. If her stance is purely on condemning corrupt activities, I would like to hear her speak out on the 48 houses uh, with the same aggression. The uh, 40 fire trucks, I would like her to speak out against that with the same aggression. And also, I'd like to, speak her to hear her speak out about Tasila Lungu and the, fence, um, the forest that she fenced and tried to claim as her own. I would like to hear her speak out with as much aggression as she did when, she, when it came to uh, criticizing HH. So we need to be consistent. What do we stand for? Do we stand for uh, fairness? Do we stand against corruption? 
So if we stand against these things, we need to be consistent. And when we're talking about, uh, we are concerned about the country and our loyalty is to the country first before a political party, we need to be consistent in that as well. So in addition to that, I would like to say, keep on asking questions, don't be afraid. Uh, do your research, be informed, and when you go and vote, vote wisely. I mean, there's no more clarity that we need with regards to the current government. It is very, very clear that um, they are very corrupt and they need to be voted out. It's PF is like the gift that keeps on giving when it comes to corruption. So there's no further assessment needed in that direction. But just be wise of who you're putting into government. Don't make it easy. This is your chance. You are the boss. You know, you're hiring someone. If you've heard yes. questions that are raising doubts about someone that you want to put, you know, in a position, you want to employ them, you need to seek clarity. There's absolutely nothing wrong in that. But also be mindful that the people who bring up certain questions may have their own agenda, but that shouldn't cloud your judgment. Mm -hmm. Just be objective, take emotion out of it. And in that way, you're going to put your country first before anything else. So yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much, everyone, for your contribution. I gotta go now. People are asking about the voter registration. Uh, it will be taking place from the 20th of October to 19th November 2020, only for the period of 30 days, one month only. Please, your old voter's card does not work in next year's election. So it's imperative that you change your voter's card. And if you don't uh, register as a voter between those months, those weeks during that period, you will not be eligible to vote. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, Thank you. Uh, good night, Joanne. Everybody will continue the live stream tomorrow. I'll start it a bit earlier because then um, we need to watch what Mr. Hakainde has responded and how you can respond to what he has said. Yeah. It's important that we educate the masses who are not aware of these things. And for me, like I'll, I'll say, I will stand for Mr. Haraka in the Hichilema because I know uh, this is a, a personal agenda uh, from Edith Nawakwe. Thank you so much. See you tomorrow in another live stream. I love you all. I love you, love you, love you, love you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.